Hi everyone, this is Hoke Smith with Nuix, and today I'm going to show you in this short video how the Nuix Adaptive Security Solution can be used both to detect and investigate uh, insider threat, specifically in this case we'll focus on data exfiltration, and we'll also uh, demonstrate how you can hunt for and investigate artifacts associated with an advanced persistent threat using the same tool and platform. What we're looking at here is the Enterprise Console and Adaptive Security, and at the top you can see I have my Alerts pane. At the moment there's no active alerts. And then I have three uh, endpoints, Windows machines, that are connected to the server. At the moment that's the, what the green three indicates. And these, um, these endpoints are streaming data back to my server, which gives me the ability to detect uh, malicious, potentially malicious behavior in real time. So let's um, actually execute a basic data exfiltration scenario here. We'll start with our Windows 10 machine, G4L510. And on G4L510, I'll plug a thumb drive in. And copy the file graphene testing Bangkok lab.csv. I'm going to eject this thumb drive and connect it to my Windows 7 machine. Now this machine actually has access to a file sharing service. So the first thing our bad guy is going to do is he'll copy the file to the desktop. And then he's going to rename it to new file. CSV. And then finally, you'll upload it to the file sharing site. And you can see that now that upload is complete. So let's take a look at what we see in adaptive security. The first thing we notice is that there's a series of alerts here. Now these alerts are indicative of the kinds of detections that adaptive security is capable of. Um, most enterprises aren't running all of these at the same time, but they're included in the demo here just to give a sense of the kinds of detections that are possible. So the first example is an unrecognized removable media device was inserted. And what that reveals is that a uh, device that did not match a authorized uh, device serial uh, was inserted into my first uh, Windows 10 machine. We then uh, created an alert because a file related to a specified program, in this case we've just called it Graphene, was copied or deleted. Now Adaptive Security is able to actually watch uh, the creation, the deletion, the renaming of a specified set of files and those files can be specified according to their MD5 hash or to their name and in this case we saw that one of those files was actually copied or deleted. Then that files were saved to removable media and that was all on my Windows 10 machine. Now when we moved over to the Windows 7 machine, we see that an unrecognized removable media device was inserted. Um, again, a file related to the Graphene program was copied or deleted, and we're able to watch for these file writes across the enterprise. And then finally, more than one megabyte was uploaded to an unknown location. So seeing this, this alert for G4L17 alerts me to a possible data exfiltration scenario. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a screenshot of the end user's machine just by right-clicking on the Windows 7 machine here, entering a session ID of 1, and clicking OK. And that will tell the adaptive security agent to actually create a screenshot around uh, at exactly the time that I clicked that so that there will be some potentially something useful there as part of my triage of these alerts. Now to focus a bit more on this data exfiltration event, the first thing I'd like to see is the network activity around it. And to get to that, it's a pretty simple right-click, Triage Insights Network. And this will bring up 10 minutes of network data uh, associated with this particular host. You can see the filter down here is set to G4L17, a time span of 10 minutes. And then it's also been filtered down to PID1868, which is the Chrome process that was associated with this exfiltration event. So I'll, I'll sort by byte sent to start with because I'd like to see which large file transfers took place during this time period. And I can see that there was a file by a user called Chelsea Snowden that was sent to remote address 52.216.101.19 and that that file is about 1.8 megabytes in size. 
Now, the next thing I might want to do is investigate this, um, this remote address. And I can look that up by searching Google for that IP address or searching RobTax for the IP address. But at the moment, I think I'm going to focus more on files. So I'll take a look here at files that were created, renamed, or deleted around this time. And I'll do that simply by right-clicking Insights Files. Okay, and that's going to bring up, um, again, about a 10-minute block of data for uh, file system writes, and those are indicated out here. We see write, rename, and delete. And in this case, they're all associated with PID 1868, which is the Chrome process. And I can sort by file size to see if I see anything of similar file size. And there's nothing here that's 1.88 megabytes in size, so I'm going to expand my search simply by unclicking process IDs and click reload. And that will reveal all of the file system activity uh, around the same time frame, um, not narrowing it down by process ID or by specific process. What I can quickly see is a file name called Graphene Testing Bangkok Lab, which looks like it might be interesting. There's also new file uh, CSV. And I can see here that the MD5s of these two um, these two files actually match, which is very helpful in determining that there was a name change between graphene testing and newfile.csv. Now, uh, as part of my investigation, I'd actually like to examine this file. So I'm going to go to File System, Download File. And this will actually bring back uh, the file to, to me on the server here, on my server here. And I could give this a password if I want to password protect the zip file that is stored in and close it out and allow adaptive security to download it to the server. Now the other thing I'd like to do is actually check my screen capture. So I'm going to go to Artifacts, Screenshots, and see here that we have a screen capture of the actual um, file upload activity. And I can download that to my desktop. But it's pretty evident just from mousing over it that newfile.csv was uploaded to the jumpshare.com website. Now, just to revisit quickly what we did here is we received an alert that more than one megabyte was uploaded to an unknown location. We reviewed the network activity associated with that alert to see that there was a transfer by the Chrome process and user Chelsea Snowden of 1.8 megs in size. We then examined files that were saved, renamed, or deleted on that same endpoint within that same time to discover a file called graphene testing Bangkok Lab.csv. We retrieved that file to the server for further examination, and we discovered an additional file called newfile.csv, which has a matching MD5 hash to the file that we're concerned about. And then finally, we looked at a screenshot of the actual user's activity that was taken at the time of the event to get additional information and to identify the fact that newfile.csv was actually uploaded to uh, the site, to the JumpShare site.